Okay, we're going to look at creating a mathematical model to describe a situation. And so for this first example, we are going to assume that the rate of growth of a population is proportional to the number of individuals in the population. So we're going to create this mathematical model, but we also want to exhibit that we understand what those good practices are that we talked about in the previous video for creating mathematical models. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we clearly state what our assumptions are. So one of those assumptions is that this statement that I have up here in my example is true, that the rate of growth, I'm not going to rewrite all of that, uh, this, so this same thing here, proportional, that that is our assumption that we're starting with. Uh, the other thing that we're going to assume here uh, is that we can describe the proportionality constant and so that we can, we can describe that a little bit as well. So that's actually going to be in our next thing that we want to do here is we want to clearly define what our variables, independent variables, dependent variables, and parameters are. And so that proportionality constant is actually a parameter. So we're going to clearly define our variables. All right, so we're going to have an independent variable here that is going to be based on time. This, when we're talking about a rate of growth of a population, we would be talking about with respect to time. So our independent variable is going to be time. And depending on the problem and what other data we might have about this, we might define that to be time in days, months, years, weeks, whatever we want to, seconds, minutes. So we're just going to put here in some specific sort of units that we would, we would define based on whatever other knowledge we have of this situation. Our dependent variable is going to be the number of individuals in the population. And then parameters. So we're actually going to have two parameters here. One that's explicitly described in our assumptions here, and one that's not, that we would need to uh, maybe infer that we would know about this. Um, so one of them is this constant of proportionality. When you think about one thing being proportional to another thing, mathematically that means that the first thing is equal to a constant times the second thing here. So we have some sort of constant of proportionality. That's a parameter. I'm going to use K. And inherent in our assumptions is that we're going to have enough information to be able to establish what that K is. We weren't really given any other information in this particular example that would allow us to do that. But if this is going to be a model that's worth anything for actually describing what's happening with this population, we would need some assumptions here that we have some data that allows us to establish what these constants are. And the other thing that we would probably need to know is an initial population for uh, this population here. So P of zero, and since we were not given that number here, we might just describe that as P naught. So that would be whatever an initial population is at time T equals zero. That would be one of the things that we would need to know to describe the constant of proportionality. Um, all right, and then we want to be able to write a mathematical model. We want to use as simple of a model as possible that describes this situation. So for our mathematical model, since we are using differential equations here, 
we have something about a rate of change, which is going to be a derivative. Um, so sometimes your mathematical model actually involves a differential equation and sometimes it doesn't. But for this class, we're going to be using differential equations. Um, we've got a rate of growth here. So that should indicate to you something about a derivative. Rate of growth of a population with respect to time. So dp dt is proportional to, so equals k times the number of individuals in the population, which is what our variable p is. So this is a very simple mathematical model that's just basically translating what we have here in this assumption uh, into an equation. All right, and then we haven't done much with solving differential equations yet since we just started the course, but this might be one that you would have seen in a calculus class. Sometimes it's taught in calculus class as a very simple example of a differential equation. And so you could use mathematics to solve that differential equation. When you solve that differential equation, it's going to be an equation that you would have seen in previous math classes. You're going to get p of t equals p naught times e to the kt. If you haven't seen how to solve that, we will be doing that in the next couple of days in this class. So we will soon be able to solve that. But, but this would be the solution. Uh, so this p naught is that initial population. So I now have two parameters, two unknown constants in this equation. My p naught, which is my initial population, that might be different for different populations, and this k constant of proportionality. So I've used letters to represent those, but both of those things I just circled there are really constants, not variables. I have an input independent variable t and an output dependent variable p. All right, if you think about this, this is a very simple equation that you know a lot about from previous math classes. And so I've got here an analytic solution to this differential equation. But you might also use uh, um, numerical methods to think about what this solution looks like for different values of k and look at different graphs for that. But in general, so if k is positive and p naught is positive, you should know what this graph is basically going to look like. This is basically a simple exponential function curve. And your starting value here would be p of 0 equals p naught. And the bigger k is, the steeper this curve is. And so if you think about whether this makes sense in the context of the problem, you might have a population that starts out with a slow growth rate. As there are more and more individuals, they're able to meet and reproduce more effectively. And so you get an, an increasing rate of change for that population. And so the population increases more and more rapidly. This actually describes situations pretty well. If you have a small population and a large environment, so that there are not things like food shortages that might start to control the population growth. Um, so this is an OK model for some populations. Bacteria growth often happens like this, small population in a large environment. But when there are limited resources like food or space, sometimes the population is not going to continue like this forever. It's going to eventually level out. And so what we've started with here is a simple model that describes population. This is a kind of a typical population rate of change sort of problem that you might have seen in a pre-calculus or an algebra class. Uh, we've looked at the differential equation that actually describes that. But what we're going to look at in some later videos is modifying some of these assumptions a little bit to think about what happens if I have limited resources are not evident in this model. So this would represent when we have unlimited resources. But in practice, often we do have limited resources. So we might go back and reiterate this process, take this model and modify it a little bit so that we can then think about what happens if I have limited resources. All right, so we'll look at that in the next video.